our next step with SPSS is, is to run our first test. So we're going to do a simple t-test. So I had two classes. In this case, I'm uh, testing the difference between I've, I've given, imagine I have two classes that are taking a midterm. And one of them I've given a guide. Uh, it was nice to them, a uh, study guide. And the other class, I didn't give a study guide. And now I notice that there's a difference in the grades. It looks like the ones with the guide uh, got slightly better. And so I want to uh, use this as a sample um, to see if providing study guides to um, students makes them do better on, on tests. So I'm going to, uh, first of all, I reformatted that. I have now have three columns. I've got a group variable, which is my class A and class B, uh, all the student numbers, um, so the unique samples in that and the grade that each student received on the test. And so variables across the top in each case, each sample unit down the side uh, with a group variable. So click save on that to make sure it's saved. And remember that I'm going to be opening that SPSS um, workbook in um, SPSS. So I'll close that and then I've opened SPSS and I'm going to tell it that I want to open an existing data source here. And then dive into my crazy hard drive, look for that folder. And again, I know it's here, um, but it's not showing up because I need to switch to an Excel file. Open my example t-test. And then Again, read variable, variable names from the first row of data. Yep, my worksheet, here's where I want to switch and make sure I use that SPSS worksheet. It'll automatically choose the range here, so I can leave the rest of this uh, as default values. All right, so now it's grabbed those uh, variable names in, my groups A and B, my student numbers, and my grades, formatted in the way that SPSS likes it. Now, another thing we want to check is a variable view here. This tells me how it's interpreted those variables. I can see that I've got a uh, group it sees as a string, a student is numeric, and grade is numeric. Um, and the key here is that I want to make sure that my variable um, for grades is a scale variable. So that's like a ratio. We talked about data types. Um, and the other one we're looking at is group. It's nominal, um, and that's fine in this case. So let's go back to our data view, and to actually run the t-test, and most tests are under uh, analyze. So here, I'm going to look at compare means, um, and I see I've got an independent and paired sample t-test. And since these are two separate independent samples, um, and not the same students taking the same test again, I want an independent sample t-test. Now here it's telling me the variables that I can use for this test and where I need to place them for it to run its, its um, run this test. In this case, I've got a grouping variable, and that's my groups A and B. And the test variable is the grade that they received. So that's what I want to include. Now notice here it's got question marks for group, so I need to define groups. I can't quite see that A and B. So I'm going to tell it I've got group 1 is A and group 2 is B. Say continue. Now for most tests, you may want to look at the other options to see what can be run. Uh, in this case, we're going to leave the options to the defaults and say OK. Um, we want to look at the results, try to interpret them. Um, some of the things that SPSS produces are a little bit complicated at first glance on what they produce. And again, the first thing that I want you to do is to go through the help uh, topics and tutorials. So for any of these tests, the first thing you want to do is, is read the SPSS help guide to determine kind of uh, as, as a guide to how to interpret this. All right, so we had two groups. We had one class uh, that got a study guide and one that didn't. So we're going to find out there's a significant difference in their test scores. Now there's um, two different lines that are reported here. What I eventually want to look at here is the significance. This two-tailed test. So this is our p-value. It's telling us the likelihood of a type 1 error and how likely it was that we got um, uh, these, these samples from the broader populations merely by chance. So at first glance here, it doesn't look like either one of these is significant, um, but I want to talk about each of these lines and decide which one we need to pay attention to. 
<clears throat> so the first one says equal variance assumed, and the second is equal variance not assumed. Uh, a t-test is very sensitive to the variance in each of my samples, and if there's a big discrepancy or difference in the variance of the two samples, uh, the t-test can be, give you a false um, significance. Um, so there's a test for on determining whether or not those samples have equal variance. It's called the Le Le Levine's test for equality of variances. And this first part here is running that test. Uh, it generates uh, an F stat as a result, um, and we're paying attention to the significance of that F stat. Now, the its null hypothesis is that there's no difference in variance. So if you have a large significance value, a large p value, and it's saying that do not reject the null hypothesis, I mean the variance is equal. If this is small, below 0.1, then um, there was a, a significant result. Then we reject the null hypothesis and the variance is not equal. So in this case, uh, we did not reject the null hypothesis. So we can use this first row that, the, that we do have equal variance amongst our samples. And so I read across here, uh, I get the T uh, test result. So think again about the T distribution and where that lands in the T distribution. And then we're, it's automatically air, adding up the area at each tail and coming up with this value of 0.1. So we're close but not quite there um, for a significance uh, level of 10%. Um, so just shy of saying that we have um, kind of a significant result here. So that's how we interpret the results here. Now often you're going to want to take these results out of SPSS um, and report them as part of a report. And that's fairly easy. Um, so it's easy for me to select each of these components. As you run different tests, this um, output viewer will increase. So let's say I want to decide I want to use that within my um, Word document. So I'll select it with the little yellow line there. Go up to Edit. Say Copy. I can open a Word document and then paste this in here. Um, and then it's it's an actual table in Word and I can delete um, some of these columns and so forth that I may not need um, for my reporting. So here since I've assumed equal variance I'll probably get rid of this whole second line. Alright, so that's how to do con to, to conduct and interpret your t-test. Um, so good luck on the lab uh, and running that yourself.